Okay. God has to help us this morning. Praise God. But I want you to be encouraged and, <clears throat> and just to see something that um, hopefully you hadn't thought about. And, and uh, uh, let me open this up. I keep closing this. So 20 years ago, plus a few years back anyways, a uh, um, girl by the name of Erica Johnson was in her high school biology class. And uh, they're doing an experiment involving cells. And they were using a widely known cell called the HeLa cells. Uh, Brother Kofor, have you ever heard of the HeLa cells? Yes. And so um, it um, was taken from a woman by the name of Henrietta Lacks, the HeLa cells. And so this, this girl says, oh, my God. This is my grandmother I'm holding in my hand because her grandmother was a lax, Gila lax. She was a lax. And so here's this story about this particular woman by the name of um, 30 years old and, and five kids. And she went to John Hopkins um, uh, hospital and uh, just a poor Afri African American Southern tobacco farmer, but she had an aggressive cervical cancer, and in fact, she died that very year. But her cells, and they often they would culture cells uh, from patients. It was a normal thing, uh, but uh, Doctor Doctor Guy's uh, laboratory, he had cultured these particular cells, but most cells die quickly. Hers survived. In fact, hers not only survived, they thrived. This is in a Petri dish and cells, they just cultured them. And so anyways, every 20 hours, her cells would double. And uh, she's the first human living cell line where her cells reproduce indefinitely. Now, this is all the way back in 1951. 1951, and uh, so they, her cells just have this extraordinary, extraordinary capacity to just survive and reproduce. Uh, and so what that's done is that has allowed uh, science <clears throat> to learn all about cells, to be able to research cells. And uh, the research, it went worldwide, all over the world. They're studying her, you know, her cells. Uh, and... Uh, they use them for testing sensitivity to uh, toxins or uh, tape or, or uh, <clears throat> cosmetics, glue, different things, and uh, just how cells respond, even to radiation, to poisons, to viruses. And it's, it's a very, very big part in uh, developing uh, um, shots, and, and, uh, but even in outer space how cells survive. And so uh, this is a very, very interesting story about this particular woman and her cells. <coughs> and I want to jump here, and we'll be referring to that a couple of times, but in Genesis chapter 22, verse 18, God was telling Abraham something. And he said, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because... You have obeyed my voice. So I want to talk about the, the seed of obedience. That's the title of the sermon in this place this morning. The seed of obedience. Her cells, Henrietta, are making a huge impact on society. The medical discoveries that have come from that, from the research, uh, in vitro fertilization. It all stems back to her and what they were able to do with their cells is uh, developing vaccines and, and, and they conquered polio because of her. Uh, uh, and there's 11,000 to date, 11,000 patents involving the HeLa cells. HeLa, HeLa, He, Henrietta, Lax, HeLa. Lacks. That's where they got the HeLa cells from. So 
I want to first of all talk about just uh, what obedience produces. Abraham, that's who we read about in the text. Uh, and uh, in his life, uh, this was a man that was raised with idol-worshiping parents. My parents were not saved. Far, far from it. And they didn't. They didn't hate Jesus, but they definitely didn't follow Jesus. And and so, anyways, he was raised Abraham with parents that were idol worshipers. Look at um, in Joshua chapter twenty-four. It talks about a long, um, long ago, your ancestors, uh, Terah, the the father of Abraham. This is mom and dad worshipped other gods. So he grew up in that, worshiping false gods. So here's this man that. We're talking about in the text that his seed would touch every nation of the world. His seed and, and that he'd be a blessing to all the nations of the world. Well, this man, when God first called him away from his parents, was 75 years old. You're an old guy, a really old guy. And um, he was called to go to someplace that was very, very difficult. He didn't know anything about it. Now, you have to understand. The city that Abraham was in, that he grew up in, was Ura, located in Mesopotamia. And anyways, this, this actually is the first known civilization in the world, according to uh, archaeologists. <clears throat> so, and Ura was the seaport city, a bustling city, and, and, and it was uh, right on the water, a major city. Uh, like the urban center, uh, seaside, and active, right on the edge of the water. That's where he grew up, in San Diego, or in, uh, what would you say, Wilmington, you know? Uh, but, uh, but this was a seaport, so it's like boats in and exchange, and so, so the major, major city, uh, and not just that, the only city. He grew up there, and now God's asking him, to take on a nomad's life, which means a huge transition. But he would, he would just to go, just go to a place, put your tent there, and, and just roam around that area. So away from what everything he knew. He's taken in another whole place, uh, constantly traveling. Uh, and uh, in fact, he never ever did all Okay, we're good to go. So this is the only thing that he knew is where he grew up, and, and now he's going to a place, uh, and the only land he ever, ever owned was his wife's little cave that he bought with a little field that where he, uh, she could be buried. That's all he ever owned. But he obeyed. He went. He was a righteous man. He was a man that believed against all Odds, uh, God told me he's going to have a baby, and that you know that child would impact and his descendants, all the nations of the world. So yeah, okay, didn't happen, <clears throat> didn't happen, and it didn't happen for how many years? Well, God told him at seventy-five, and it went until he was a hundred, and his wife was eighty that that baby actually was born. So he's believing God for all these years, and uh, and he's got this faith that's. That's against all logic. When the baby was born, several years went by, 10, 12, 13 years. And then God tells him, sacrifice your boy to me. Kill him and put him on an altar. Let him burn. Well, he says, okay, God, but you got to raise him back from the dead because um, you promised this boy would touch the world. And he was going to do it. But then just before he did it, the angel stopped and said, that was just a test. To see that, Abraham, you'll do whatever I ask. 
You're, you're obedient. And so here's this man in the text we read that your descendants are going to just, they're going to touch every part of the world, every corner of the world. And it's because of your obedience. You can also look at Jesus, not just Abraham in the text, but Jesus in his life. We know that he knew he had to live a sinless life. He fought sin and he was without sin. He conquered it. And, uh, and he was very careful, in fact, in every way to not do anything unless God wanted him to do that. He had a relationship very intimate with the father. And he says, I've come down from heaven to do the will of God who sent me not to do my own will, but I want to do the will of God that sent me. He was faithful all the way through to do God's will, even to the death. He asked God, I don't want to go to the cross. Please, God, is there any other way? But nevertheless, thy will be done. So he weathered the beatings. He absorbed the whippings. And he spilled his blood. All of it. The Bible says he, being in the appearance of a man, he was humbled himself to, to becoming obedient to death. So Abraham was obedient. Jesus was obedient even all the way to the cross. And so what we're talking about this for is because um, what Abraham and Jesus had both done, God wants to duplicate in us to duplicate that to have that seed take hold uh, in us to to live where we're called to be not where we want to go but where god has called us to be of course you have to be very sensitive and to push out what you want but god whatever you want just make it clear and also that um there's a lot of things we could survive without. Oh, no, I got, I've got to be close to my family. i got to have this. i got to have. No, you don't. No, no, I, I, I can't stand the cold. You know, or I can't stand the heat. Or, or, you know, no, you, you, you can survive with a lot. Uh, you can survive without a lot. Let's put it that way. And how about keep believing like Abraham? That's a seed that God. And, and uh, just always obey like Jesus and Abraham and to overcome sin like they both had done and, and to stay in God's will, to stay close with God and, and to endure the hardships <clears throat> as they both did. They just endured them. And so <clears throat> that's what... <clears throat> Is our first point here. We're talking about what obedience produces. And we want to produce what reproduces. We want to produce what reproduces. So God, in the beginning, the Bible says he created the seed, right? Let the earth sprout vegetation, plant Plants yielding seed and fruit trees on the earth bearing fruit after their kind with seed in them. And the Bible says it was so. In the creation, God built creation in such a way that a seed would carry on and carry on and carry on and multiply and that it would have effect. We know the Bible talks about the seed of the gospel. The seed, the small thing, planting a seed in someone's heart. The seed of the gospel and, and, and how planting that or casting it as you're openly preaching or talking to several people at once. And so you're, you're planting, you're casting seeds and, and how when that lands upon hearts, uh, it does germinate. It has an effect. So this is the seed of the gospel. Uh, and as that seed begins to grow, there's seed in, the, in that seed, as in the vegetation and in the trees. This is the way that God had, had planted. And so, you know, going back to um, uh, Henrietta, she unknowingly changed the world. Unknowingly. She's dead. 
but unknowingly changed the world. Did you know that 25 years went by, 25 years before even her family discovered what was coming and how her cells took off and changed medicine and science. 25 years, had no clue the impact of her cells. She impacted every area of medical science, every single area of it, and she's impacted literally the entire world. This one woman. The you know, Bible talks about Christian fruitfulness <clears throat> and casting seed. You know, that seed could, we could call it finances. We could call it good deed seeds, just good deeds. In fact, there's this verse in the Bible here where it says that um, you know, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your fathers who's in heaven. So this is a way now of planting seed and casting this gospel seed and, and how it has effect that you don't see. You don't realize and know what we, uh, just how we interact with God to begin with in, in, in what we do, how that impacts you don't realize. I remember we were just talking about this, Kathy and I, to somebody about uh, being in Turkey, and <clears throat> we had the mafia that was, there's the church potter's house right next to us. I mean, we bordered the same wall, was the mafia. And they had to go in and get guns all the time. In fact, a police officer in our church had been there a few times and, and gotten the guns out. It was very scary, scary people. Kaylin hated them. Because they thought she was the cutest little girl, a little turned up nose. They got these big honker noses. and But she had a little turned up nose. And, and, and all these men would want to come and kiss her. And, and it wasn't weird. It wasn't perverted. But she hated their beards on her face. And, and uh, uh, she hated them. But uh, so one time they said, hey, come here, come here. Have some chai. Come, come. That's how they do it. Gal, gal. Come. Have some chai. These big burly guys. There's probably 10, 15 of them there in that building. Now, and they're all just sitting around there. And I'm in like the center. And they're all like, they're like trying to talk to me about, you know, what are you doing? And this and that. And, and they, these are big, uh, big, big burly guys. And, and anyways, they went and they brought some, uh, I don't know, something to eat or something like that. And um, so, you know, they gave me something to eat. And, and all I did was I just said, you know, let me bless the food. And Jesus, Father, that's just a simple prayer, bless the food. And so I'm, I started, but they're all like, they're stunned, quiet, until one of the guys spoke English. He simply said, you will never have another problem with your church. We'll make sure of it because they broke the windows, threatened, you know, the bombs, you know, whatever. We, you will, and we did. All I did was pray a simple prayer over what I'm going to eat. But that something snapped and happened that I had no clue. Let me tell you something. The things you do, the things, how you have your relationship with God, how you praise, oh, thank God for that, and, and what you say, and, and uh, you're being observed. Everything, I'm telling you, that that's that's passed on spiritual cells being passed on uh, and so these are things that people can observe and even the things they can observe but they pick up and there's something different uh, so those things go out and so everything in our interaction with God it has an effect in our interaction with with people again what we do what we say what 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 they observe and and it has in effect, now look at this. In your seed, all the nations are going to be blessed. Something's going to happen. 
something very tiny. It's a little seed. You may not even know it. But then that seed, boom, it, con it connects, it connects. And it goes, it multiplies, it goes, it goes, it goes. And uh, with Abraham, absolutely so. Every nation of the world has been blessed. So we're talking about an accumulate, accumulate, has an effect. <laughs> and uh, uh, Abraham inherits the land, which actually didn't possess in a title deed, but he was able to have a dominion and he lived there. He was the father of many nations, and we know him in the Bible as being the father of faith. Seed has affected us today, really. That seed of faith has been passed on, passed on now. Look at it. Every single one of us in this place, we believe in God. Well, we haven't seen him. That was Abraham. That was Abraham. Has been little bits and multiplied and gone. And, and, and then Jesus. You know, it just would come from his life. And, of course, he's, his name is above every name. Every name. And he's seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And, and he's qualified. To be king of kings and lord of lords. And, and the Bible says these words. Whatever you sow. Whatever little tiny speck that goes out. And, and uh, that you're going to reap. It's going to come back on you. You're going to reap that. And he who sows to the spirit. Well, the spirit reap everlasting life. And so, so it's not just doing good for us. But it's doing good for, for the entire world. So I want to. I want to bring it to a close because I think you're catching what I'm saying here. Henrietta passed away, but she lives on. This is a woman that has taken her place in history. She's the mother of medicine, they say. She had no clue. There's little, little cells. 65 years later, her cells, they still exist today. And she continues to impact the world. Continues. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you've obeyed my voice. We can have an effect. If you obey God, just obey God, your life is going to touch. It's going to absolutely blow your mind. Do you know the estimate? The estimate of um, Henrietta's, uh, <clears throat> when you total all the HeLa cells together, 55 million tons of cells. 55 million tons. Tons. That's 2,000 pounds. Incredible story. As she's produced, as she has no idea, the impact of her life. Literally, she's affected every single one of us. And have you been back vaccine? You got HeLa cells. Somehow, some way. And uh, um, praise God. Literally, she's affected each and every one of us in this place. So I'm here to tell you, live for God. Obey God. And what you do, even you, you won't see it, but what you do, it has an incredible effect uh, uh, upon, uh, it, it's just going to go, it's going to affect people, going to affect uh, uh, friends, family, schoolmates, and, and, uh, and it's going to go on and on and on, and you're going to be blown away when you get to heaven. God says, this, this is... Now, one thing you said, how you encouraged, how you said it, and they saw you really had faith and you really believed in a God. Boy, that opened them up later. They, they never told you, but they ended up getting saved. And then they had the fact that, and, and I'm telling you, just live for God. Are you hearing this? New. And you won't know until we cross over into eternity. God.